Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything with Mariano and Pauline. Hashtag Pauliano. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple. It's simple, such a sad song. The one that, the one that we rely on. To get us, to get us. Hello, everybody. Thanks for listening to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. I'm Mariano. And I'm Pauline. And we're hashtag Pauliano. And we've got a few different things to cover today. First of which, I guess, being Eve Plum. Do you want to start with the Bradys? Sure, yeah. Brady Bunch? Or one of the Brady's. Did you? I never watched that show growing up. You I didn't? kind of. I was going to ask you if you if you did. I was going to say like I've seen a few episodes, but I think I was kind of like too young to really get into it um, when it was like at its height. I guess. I think I was too, but I watched it because my older sister watched right. it. Right, and so like I remember them. Like, and I know what the yeah. premise is exactly, but then I don't. I I couldn't really tell you about any of the episodes. Yeah, or the Brady's of the shows. did not care about overpopulation. How many kids did they? But have? ooh, I think seven. I don't know the total. Kids. I just remember the youngest one and curls <laughs> at the on the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, but it's one of those cute like classic shows that everybody kind of knows of. Even if you didn't really watch yeah, it, I think. Yeah, it's one of those things where you you know of it. Yeah, I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah, and people always, like, reference the Brady Bunch. Like, if you have, like, a lot of kids or something, like, my mom will be like, oh, the whole brunch. Like, you know, the whole bunch of us are coming or whatever. But there's only four of us, so I guess oh, we're not really a I was true like, Brady Bunch. Shoot, my mom puts the Brady Bunch to shame. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we, yeah. Yeah? Well, I mean, big families are fun. We mob deep. Yeah. I think big families are fun. I, I enjoy – I've always wanted a lot of kids, so – I, I think big, big. Well, pretty big. soon you'll have the dress for it. So, so <laughs> okay. So, anyway, so uh, <laughs> Eve Plum, who was Jan Brady in the Brady Bunch, has recently just sold her home for um, three point nine million. Yeah. Um, she did this in late June, but this is actually a home that she bought um, in Escondido. Escondido Beach that she actually bought in nineteen sixty nine when she was eleven years I old. I know. Lucky. And so she originally bought the home for uh, 55000 55300 uh-huh. So she definitely, like, made a lot more money off this home from the original, you right. know, initial price. But then it's kind of sad in a way because I, I'm really sentimental with a lot of things. And so it's like, you this know is what? a home. I am too, but mm-hmm. in, like, the opposite way, if that makes sense. I'm sentimental, but I... My sentiment goes toward the like the great kind of idea of like letting things go and moving on to bigger and better. Yeah, I guess, yeah. but it's a home that you like bought when you were. 11. Oh, I agree. Like, because uh, that's I'd... like for I like you. Well, I would uh, I would uh, think that that's like closing that chapter now because the Brave Bunch is over and things like that. And um, this is like a home that I assume she bought from, you know, yeah, from the, the proceeds. earnings. Yeah. yeah, from the Brady Bunch. And so like selling it is kind of like really closing that uh, chapter. I agree. But I feel like mm-hmm. there could be some kind of peace in that, too. Yeah, I guess you know, so. Like, like this home did me a good job. Now it's time to move on. Yeah. But then I don't know if you buy. a, I don't know. I mean, at any time that I buy a home, I hope that <laughs> let's just go to Escondido and buy that. I'll home. keep it forever and can pass it down but i don't know i wonder who i but then again it would be kind of cool to say that your home that you just bought is jan brady's home right yeah <laughs> <laughs> to say that you're moving into you know that i think that would be kind of cool that would be pretty cool that. yeah and i'm not normally like starstruck by a lot of people but like right. jan brady or like david Hasselhoff, like uh-huh, like an yeah. old you know if i had the hoff's house I know. I would call it the Hoff's house. What, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'd put like a big mustache above the door, something extra manly. <laughs> something like that. And like I peach think, fuzz on the, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think it's kind of, because um, I did one of those uh, like housing tours that you can do when you're like Oh, in when you're LA. in LA? Yeah, yep. where they take you like the, to the stars home. Yeah, I used to hate. And like, through the neighborhood. I used to hate signing people up for that. I worked at a. a oh, really? I worked at a hotel right by the airport, LAX. Uh-huh. And people would sign up for those there. 
and like uh it was just they would they would pour in in these giant I, lines well, and it's funny because i mean it's just the home like you just drive no you see them sometimes past, well yeah true uh but you know like you're not really like going inside or anything like you're literally just driving kind of like by yeah but it's I don't know why. I really enjoyed it. Like, I was really excited to do that. <laughs> Some people, I love it because I've done it since I worked at the hotel. Like, I got to go for oh, free, yeah. like, every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Probably I could have went a lot, but I just, I didn't really right. care. I went, honestly, just to take advantage of it as a bus. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and I would just kind of jump off somewhere. Yeah, you can, um, yeah. And, um, it was fun because I would love to see some people come from like, because, you know, people come from like Indiana and yeah. they're taking pictures of the house and they have like the biggest grin on their face. And I'm like, you know what? Good for you. Like, you're right. You know? Like I saw the house that um, they used as like the Fresh Prince house. Like, oh, the front of it. wow. Like, in Bel Air. Yeah. And I, that's the one of the houses that I did take like a picture in front of. Okay. That, see, I admit I would do the same. <laughs> it's fun. Right. Yeah. And it's just kind of like. I don't know why. And well, the I'm Fresh sure... Prince just represents such a big piece of my life anyway. Right, so, yeah. You know. And I, I'm not sure if like, I mean, I probably, if I lived in those neighborhoods, because like, they're actually like people's homes. Like no, people live there and things. Oh, the studio doesn't own <laughs> and it? And so, uh, no, because like, it's like a home, like it's an actual house. I know, but the studio yeah. doesn't own that house? No, I don't think the uh, Fresh Prince house, I think somebody actually lives in there. Okay. And then uh, you know like what a house family. I want to go to? Remember the Fast and the Furious, the first movie? Uh, no, I never saw, I never saw those. Oh, no? Yeah. Well, the, they get a little weird toward the last few, but mm-hmm. the first one is so good. And right. I just rewatched it and, um, they, it takes place in like Hollywood and Glendale and then like oh, Coachella mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, um, their house, I want to say is in like NoHo. Oh, okay. And, um, I want to go to that house. Yeah. So know? it's just kind of like cool. Cause they just like represent like little pieces of like mm-hmm. pop culture and they bring it up stuff. too. Yeah. And so it's kind of cool. And I always thought, like, on those tours when they tell you, like, oh, this house used to belong to so-and-so, but now this cool person lives there. And it's just like, that's just a cool house. Like, I mean, I don't even know if they even stay there that much, you know, because a lot of celebrities have multiple homes. Right, they move around. But just the fact that they own it just they makes it cool. They have beautiful homes, too, because I told you that I would train dogs out there. And, like, oh, I would mm-hmm. I would house sit up there, like, you know, oh, wow. in different places, like in the Hollywood Hills or Calabasas. Or, mm-hmm. And some of these places are so beautiful. Yeah. And, like, they're small but you see like these these like pieces of like retro furniture yeah. right next to like one of those old like fourteen thousand dollar guitar like mm-hmm. their interiors are just so it almost looks like a magazine it's weird yeah you know and it's like that's actually like a person's real home yeah and they have like four beautiful dogs i'm like man it must be cool you know yeah. <laughs> so i mean it's kind of cool that jan has been able to well not jan well her name is eve yeah but um, no, her name is jan so <laughs> it's kind of cool like you said that she is like <laughs> moving on to bigger and better yeah yeah i things. respect that kind of thing i i get sentimental and mm-hmm. i understand sentiment but mm-hmm. i i appreciate you know, moving forward because I understand that like right. everything has an end and there's nothing wrong with it, you know? Right. Yeah. And so whoever bought that house, lucky you, because that's just kind of a cool thing to it say. It was that, me. Let's go hang out. That, <laughs> that that's your house now, you know? And um, that, like I said, like, it's just kind of cool to say that like yeah. so-and-so As long as they don't turn it into like a crack den. Yeah. Oh, no. Hopefully not. Hopefully I doubt. A 3.9 million. And I'm sure it's beautiful. Yeah. Where, well, at least the location is very beautiful. Yeah. You know, and that kind of adds to it. So that's well, I'm really sure. Cool. I wonder, too, what she did to it over the years. Like, I'm sure it's. Yeah. How it's know. like grown with her. Yeah. So I wonder, you know, when I think about like kid stars, because um, she bought this home when she was 11, 11. which is like amazing. <laughs> and that just actually goes to show you how big the Brady Bunch was. That I know. An eleven-year-old actress. I know how lucky I hate. I, like, I love slash hate that. I'm literally lucky. buy a. You home. bought a home at eleven. I'm about to be twenty-four, and I'm yeah. like struggling. For- and so, and so, I, I'm sure I would assume. I mean, I don't know that her family must have moved into that. You know, like so she was able That's to what help I thought. her family. Yeah. You know, which is really cool. I too. thought the exact same thing uh, yesterday. I was like, you know what? I bet her mom was really like proud. Like, oh, cool. Like, I yeah. Get home. Like, I always get choked up. And for some weird reason, I always get choked up mm-hmm. whenever I hear rappers um, rap about their moms, you know? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I bought my mom a new crib or whatever. And I'm like, right. that, that really makes me, like, like happy, sad. Right. Because I'm like, oh, man, good for your mom. And I'm like, yeah. I love to hear that, you know? It is nice. It yeah. is nice. And so um, that's kind of cool. I, I wonder, like, you know, all the memories. If she stayed living there all throughout these years or if she, like, has other homes. I'm not quite sure. I so, don't but- know. But I feel like she would. I mean, she yeah. she didn't like sell it and move nowhere. So I'm assuming she's no right. But I'm wondering if this is the only home she's ever lived in. Since oh, 11, uh, maybe, huh? Because she... why would she have it for that long? Yeah, I mean, 
And sometimes when people like there's a lot of people who buy like just one home and they, you know, stay there for like ever, which is fine, too. We need to hunt down all the Brady's. Yeah. And like find out where they- <laughs> I know. Where are they at now? That's kind of cool. I wonder what they are doing. So um, we're going to cut it to a quick break, but we have a lot to talk about this episode. So keep it locked here. You're listening to the Social Media News Podcast. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on twitter visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info and we are back okay so we just finished talking about jan brady's well i don't know about her new, her old house i want to know where she moved to she doesn't want us to know. She doesn't? <laughs> probably not. Uh, I wanna look. She maybe. probably is like, yeah. Do you think that's why she sold? Ooh. Maybe. Because, I mean, if everybody... Because, like, I always think about that when I when I went on that housing tour in L.A. Do they get annoyed? I was thinking to myself, like, this would be... I would get annoyed. But then I, I guess you know yeah. that's going to happen. Yeah. But still, you know? Because... Or just move to Calabasas. Like, in Calabasas, all the houses have those, like, really big electronic gates really far from the front door. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, so, so like they're like homes are like really deep in. Yeah. In set. Yep. So like mm-hmm. it's it's rare that I see a single like ha- like it's rare that I see a single door from the gate. Right. They're that huge. And they have like right, right. bushes and stuff. Um, but for some privacy. Yeah. Where does Johnny Depp live? Oh, I don't know. I know it's in L.A. Probably. I'm sure he owns a home at least there. Yeah. yeah. No, I know he does. But I, I don't know where, though. So, well, I don't know. Yeah, let's find out. Well, spe- <laughs> well, he's going to move to a smaller place now because him and Amber Heard just got divorced. Yeah, so we or had, are getting. We had mentioned before in a previous episode that um, they were like separated and that she was uh, filing for a divorce and um, that they were going to end their marriage, right? Based upon um, some like domestic violence that she was having. Um, that she was to subjected deal with. to, yeah, exactly. You know, and. Uh, we were very happy for her being able to take that uh, step to end that. But she has done a really – she's decided to take it even a step further in using this to kind of, in a way, Empower, change it. right. Yeah, change it for good. It's it's a very sad and terrible situation, but – I don't know. It's good for her. I mean, like, no, she – No, yeah, it is really good It's good, good that her. she's out. And, like, okay, so what happened was they're getting a divorce and they're settling mm-hmm. for $7 million. So Johnny right. Depp's going to give Amber Heard $7 million, mm-hmm. And she said that she's going to donate all of it to charities for abused women and children. Yeah. And so it's a really cool thing what she's doing. I agree. From this negative situation, how she's changing. And it's going to, like $7 million is a lot of money. Um, is it? I and don't know. Well, to be donating, yeah. I mean, I guess And to, so. you know, give it all and to these... Um, families that are going to need it and yeah these definitely women you know that, it's, it's you know, so crazy to help them. yeah it's so crazy to me how i was watching this thing on michael jackson because i love michael jackson mm-hmm. and he bought like he was buying like eighty thousand dollar chess boards and like two hundred fifty thousand dollar like vase decorations and it's crazy to me how how money can be spent so like willy-nilly but it it really can stretch so far too so like mm-hmm. not even seven million let's say like seven thousand dollars i bet the monthly expense of a celebrity is way past seven thousand dollars. Right. Just for like a phone bill, like home bills, the cars and whatever. Mm-hmm. Seven thousand for someone who has no home is a lot. Could yeah. support you for how long? Like with careful, careful budgeting. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, and it's it can help a lot of these um, because, um, and especially for it to come from somebody who's such a high, like, like a public figure, right? To show these uh families that need her help that are going to benefit from this it shows that she does care and that she you know wants to help others like her and it really humanizes her and i think it's a really really awesome thing what she's doing and i know that a lot of people are going to benefit from her and hopefully be able like this will be the first step and like this is kind of like the push that they needed to get 
I think a lot it, better, you know, like to change their lives. So I think it's going to be a really awesome thing. And it's so selfless of her. I and, wonder, you know, too, one thing that always gets to me is, is I love how people like I love how people get so touched when you do these things. Like I bought this guy. I went to uh, this restaurant, this really good Mexican restaurant in my city mm-hmm. um, that I hadn't gone to in a while because of the diet. Right. Um, and I was standing in front of some guy. He's a homeless guy. I've seen him around. Mm-hmm. And I saw him count. He had like three dollar bills in his hand. Right. And the poor thing, he he kept counting. Like he counted it like like six times. Like he one, two, three. And then right. looks at the little menu. One, two, three. And then looks at the menu and like is deciding like, okay, I have three bucks. Like what, you know, like. What can I possibly Yeah. Get? Like how can I stretch this? Yeah. And it, and it like touched me. So I didn't want to say anything to him because like my stepdad told me one time, like don't. Um. One time I I was coming home when I was working at that, in fact, at the the uh, hotel right by LAX. Mm-hmm. And I was coming home and I got like a lot of, I get a lot of tip money in LA, you know? Right. And I had like 25 in just dollar bills, like in my pocket at the time. Um, and this guy came to me and was like, hey, can I pump your gas for you? I stopped to get gas. And I was like, well, you don't have to pump my gas, but here, you know? Yeah. Um, and he ended up doing it anyway. And I was like, okay. And I went home, you know, and I thought I had did a good thing. And my stepdad was like, no, like let him pump your gas because it's a pride thing. He wants to earn it. Like, you know, it's oh. like, mm-hmm. I know you don't need him to, but he wants to do it. Like, it, it's kind of a, a bittersweet taste when you just take something. But if you if you can, like, justify it by like, hey, at least I'm doing this. It makes it easier for him to accept. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, fine. If, he, if it makes him feel better, sure. I mean, you know. Um, but this guy, so I didn't want to put him on the spot like that at the restaurant. So I didn't, like, say anything to him. I just, he was in front of me. He was ordering. So I was just pointing to him and was like, hey, look, like, whatever he gets, just, just kind of put it, like, just don't charge him. I will pay for it. And they were like, oh, and they kind of gave me like the heads up, like the finger yeah. thumbs up, you know. And um, and so he ordered his stuff. And like while he was ordering, I was kind of motioning them like here, give him two of those and then give him two of these and two of these. And um, they threw it all together. And he looked scared because he was like, what is this? Like, I don't have money for all yeah. this, you know. And I was like, oh, no, don't worry about it, dude. And, this, you know, and, and like he cried. Yeah, it does. Know? It does really impact people's lives when you are. That's right. It made me sad because I'm like, mm-hmm. man, like you poor thing. And like there are some people living, you know, lavish, lavish lifestyles, but like who can just give away seven million dollars, you know? I know. And that's that's a really cool thing because she she makes money on her own through oh, her course. own yeah. career yeah, and things like that. But to fight for something so that you get like a settlement like this, like you know, like right. seven million and then give it away is really it's really amazing. And I think that um it's it, it will help ev- everybody involved, you know, her because she's able to relate to these people and uh, these women and children and she understands and she's able to use it to do good. And I'm really excited for how this is like changing into and like the story, um, like how it's evolving and how it's kind of like, you know, me too. In the, a way changing. Into you're right. Like because a happy ending it started for, out as just yet another Hollywood couple that didn't yeah. pan out. And, and she is using it. And we always, I mean, I always really like it when, um, like, public figures and, like, ce- celebrities use their platforms for, like, good and yeah. to shed light. And what better way to... Well, not just that, but you know, shed light is one thing. She actually put her money, right. you know, where yeah. her mouth is. And yeah. that is something that I appreciate. <laughs> mm-hmm, which is really cool. So congratulations to you, Amber, on, you know, being, I'm being able super to cool. go through yeah. this and being strong enough and just being such a nice person to give it back to others. And I'm can't imagine what these families and these women that are going to benefit from this. Imagine the sense of relief. Them. You know? Yeah. And how nice must that be? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and so for her. that's going to be really uh, life changing, really. I if mean, Johnny there's Depp, nothing, there's no way else to say it other than it's going to be literally life changing. He looks people. terrible with all that right now. So if he was smart, you know what he should do? He should take more than $7 million and donate to the same thing. Mm, like, maybe just match it. Like after that. Because more is kind of like... Well, the, but the thing is, he has well, more. Well, I guess anything. He doesn't have to really. He doesn't you know. have to, but since he has more to give, you know? Because, mm-hmm. like, no offense to Amber Heard, but Amber Heard, Johnny Depp. Well, you know I, what mean, I mean, right so now, like, she's. Well, she's got seven million of his, but think of the mm-hmm. think of all the huge movies he's been a part of. No, but I mean, like, right now, she's doing more than he is. Yeah, but think of the whole history that he has, though. He's built, you know? I'm not talking about money-wise. I'm just talking about, like character wise and like oh yeah actually no, no of course i'm not i'm not speaking on, like on his character if, if he's going to abuse women then that's not cool like i mean well, it's not like i'm his best friend you yeah, know so i really yeah. don't you know he's just an actor that I, I like to see in movies but my point is i feel like a smart move for him to at least somewhat kind of ease that like burden um and get maybe a couple people off his back if he did the same 
you know like if he came out and was like hey look i messed up like everyone messes up i'm sorry and to prove i'm sorry here's like 14 million hmm. you know i don't know because no? then it kind of seems like it's changing it into like a self right like like it's it's just instead of because like in amber heard's place she's giving from like a place no, of, of like she understands no like, i understand but to help whereas like if he were to do that then it's kind of like trying to fix himself like it's it's actually kind of like a selfish act if you think about it because mm. it's to benefit him i don't it know it is going to be- benefit these families that receive the money yes but then it's kind of just to like save face and so it's kind of better to just like lay low and let her right now get the not necessarily like the credit but to let her do her well, thing she can and not have, have, have to compete like with her but i don't i wouldn't consider it competing i would consider it more like owning up and that i'd be okay with you know owning up he could like maybe better himself and like do something that will help him get past these issues that are causing him to hurt people that's what i'm saying but, something different but he could do that and donate you know i mean i don't know we'll see we'll see i guess this saga will continue and we'll, well i see doubt what that he, he will but like i'm just saying in my opinion it would be nice if he did but not but you're right because i get what you're what you're mm-hmm. getting at and that's totally valid like it would be annoying if he was like oh actually here's more no, I, I mean, what if he came out and like genuinely was like, hey, look, you know what? She's right. I messed up. Like that was a stupid thing for me to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to one up her. But now that I see like how painful or whatever it could be here, like let me help out some people too. That would be cool to me. And I can see where people would be like, oh, you're just trying to like one up her. But I would think yeah, of it, it just like, sounds like a publicity. Well, it would thing. be like, but everything they do is a publicity thing. You know what I mean? Like right. there's nothing that they even just getting divorced for them is, is public, mm-hmm. you know? I don't know. I think it'd be smart, but I guess we never know. We do need to take another quick commercial break, and then we shall be right back. We'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And we are back. Now, welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. I'm Mariano. And I'm Pauline. And uh, one thing that we saw that was blowing up, uh, it was Facebook, I think. I didn't see this too much on Twitter, but uh, Mm -hmm. on Facebook, I noticed that later this month. Ooh, so kind of soon. Yeah, pretty soon. now. And I mean, it's already halfway through the month. I was going to say, August is almost over. So yeah, pretty soon. Um, (laughs) Uber in Pittsburgh Mm -hmm. is going to kind of unveil like 100 Volvo XC90s Mm -hmm. that are self-driving cars. That's weird. It's cool. Cool weird. I would do that. Scary. I, heck no, I would do that for sure. You would definitely, you would get into a uh, like. A driverless car. Really? Yeah, for the experience. Mm. I mean, I would sit in it, but I wouldn't like. That's the, I don't on. know. <laughs> That's... I'd be like, oh, this car doesn't need a driver, but like. So what do you do? Oh, well, I, I didn't actually hear too much about this story. So do you happen to know, like, is it just. Okay, well. G, like you type, I guess you enter. Well, in Uber, you your Uber app. Yeah, you do that you as part of Uber anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So it knows where you're going, but it's just like GPS navigator. Right. And there will be someone in the car. What? Yeah, because they're testing the car. So, like, someone, so we don't even know what's going to happen. No, like someone will be there in case. Like a conductor. Yeah. But it'll be driving itself. Okay, hopefully it's like, you know, like those cars when you go like uh, training for your driver's license. Yeah, where it has like an extra brake pedal. (laughs) Hopefully it has that and like a little like steering steering wheel wheel or something. Or like a little joystick. That'd be cool. Hopefully nothing does go wrong. And I mean, if they're willing to unveil and like test a hundred, hopefully, you know, they do go through a lot of tests before this stage. Well, you know, they spent like $200 million so far on this research. Oh my gosh, that's wild. Tesla, um, Google has been at it. Tesla has been at it. Um, I think this is a Google car. 
So oh, like, okay. Google okay, Maps. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, they partner with a lot of big, you know, Pokemon Go, mm-hmm. that app that everyone goes crazy for. Mm-hmm. That's that's run by Google Maps. Ooh. Uh-huh. Yeah, Google Google is has its fingers like in a lot of yeah, and a lot of yeah. things, mm-hmm. including my cell phone. And so, because um, I'm Team Android. Team but, Android. But um, yeah, so you know, Google teamed up with Uber and they put about 200 million together and decided to put out these 100 XC 90s, and they will have like someone in the car to to check it out because these are testers, you know? Right. And if anything goes wrong, of course, that's what the guy's there for. But, um, yikes, I would totally do it. Even if the guy wasn't there, I would totally <gasps> do it. And like, no. I even BMW did this a while back, like four years ago where they satellite programmed one of their cars. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite shows of all time is top gear. Like if I ever got any sort of fame at all, mm-hmm. I would use that to go to top gear and be the celebrity in the reason uh-huh. or the star in the reasonably priced car. They call it. And, um, they programmed one of their like BMW M3s to drive the Top Gear test track, mm-hmm. and it was fast and it was cool. Like it actually did a pretty good time and everything. But my only like problem with this is because I think it is cool, and I think that because um, we kind of talked about this. I was uh, co-hosting this uh, sci-fi podcast, oh, okay, and we were talking about how um, we're like in the future for like the eighties and when they were like trying to like yeah. predict what this yeah. time now would be like yeah but in the and 80s how, like the 80s version of the future everything had like blinking lights yes, and, like, and yeah. it was like all neon yeah. <laughs> but and some of the things have kind of come to pass and you know, coils like <laughs> everything had and, coils <laughs> touch screen and like you know like holla um like how we have like the holographic like, oh, yeah. concert so there are little things that have come to pass and this is kind of like one of them ish you know like with a driverless car and things like that is pretty like futuristic i guess um, that's cool though that's a, that's a cool idea my only like problem with this because i think it is cool and i think it's just amazing how like technology and like science and all of these like people who had to like work hard to manifest this supposed to like manifest into actually right. a reality is really cool but my only thing it's like okay accidents like i'm not saying that like you're gonna get an accident i mean y- you can get hurt just walking up the stairs i know that but like there's unpredictable circumstances because there's other man operated vehicles and man sometimes like we well, make mistakes but or you judge see, bad judgment calls. So now, how is it going to know that somebody just blew past a red light? Well, because there's a reason or there is a way. The way that they know these things mm-hmm. is, well, they'll know where the red lights are because they're tuned into the Google Google Maps. But right. they know like if somebody slams on the brakes ahead of you, you know that thing where like you can set your cruise control in like a newer car to keep a certain distance. Oh, I did not know that. That's oh, cool. Well, in newer cars, like, but not that new, like in like 2012 and on cars. Yeah, that's pretty cool. There's there's a radar in the front mm-hmm. and a radar in the back. And so if you're like following a car, you can set cruise control. And if that car slows down, your car will slow down. And if it speeds up, you'll speed up and you'll keep a preset distance and you can adjust right. that distance. And so it uses radars around it, all sides of it. Or like the cars with like the rear backup cam thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it knows what's around it. Uh-huh. So if you guys all slam on the brakes, it will slam on the brakes. I hope it does in time. I hope nothing but like also, a bird doesn't fly by and mess up my radar beam. No, because it it, <laughs> it accounts for things like size and you know uh-huh. and like velocity. Um, <laughs> but also, you can just sit in the driver's seat. Like you know, you can still drive the car. No, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I get that too. But so I don't like, no, I would totally Uber like, always messes up my routes already. So like, I don't. Yeah, need but that's the driver's car fault. Car is the thing to not go. But what, okay, so. I'm just being for fun oh, right now. Okay, can I? Sorry, no, can, it's okay. Can so, I, can I just give a quick shout out to my friend, um, Lift Mike? Li- so, <laughs> so, because I did Lift for the first time like three weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I met this this dude who here in Sacramento whose name is Mike, so I call him Lift Mike, and like, you know, we were really cool together. So he t- he was like, here, get take my number and just mm-hmm. text me when you're here, and I'll I'll give you a ride. And I was like, all right, cool. So. He always has these crazy stories. And like the first night I met him, he got bit by this girl from Sac State, like on the shoulder. Oh, wow. And then the next time I saw him, he went, it was um, Outside Lands in in San Francisco, like what, last week? And he was like, yeah, I went and drove for that, like at two in the morning, I was Mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And I was driving from like second and mission, heading toward like this intersection. And these people like were like right to the right of the intersection. They were shooting at something. And so I immediately turned the car hard left like right in the middle of the intersection to skirt and like my passengers in the back were like flying around oh wow i'm sure uber drivers have like a lot of crazy right and he um and he was like the cops saw me do that and they thought i shot you know whoever oh so they pulled us over and like i was so afraid i was going to be shot and like his hands were out of the window and they had to do that whole thing and i got out lay on the ground it was scary yeah but mike though what up (laughs) (laughs) but my thing is is like 
Because when I take Uber, well, the few times that I've taken Uber, sometimes, um, I think I might have mentioned this in a previous episode, but like sometimes, you know, like a quicker way or like a way that you want to go. Oh, yeah. And like the GPS is like, oh, go around town first. And it's like, no, just make a left. Yeah, but you know, you here. can tell them where to go. Like but, when I was in but LA. I'm talking about a driverless car that's just going by GPS. Oh. What if I'm like, left, left, left. And then there's nobody to be like, what if there's a way to. Sure, a- ma'am. Like. <laughs> What if there's a way to account <laughs> like for that? Like Siri's voice or something? I don't know. What if there's like an Cortana, iPad in Cortana, the back where Cortina? you can like... Cortana? Cortana, yeah. Where you can like adjust, you know? Okay, I can work with that perhaps. Yeah. Because I feel like if they put all that money into the driverless Uber car, I'm sure they would give that as an option. I hope. Or if they didn't, now you guys know that that's what the people want. Exactly. To and be now, able to adjust yeah. the route just in case. And we want our cut as a result. Like, what if I want tacos... Oh, but like, I hate keep the meter that. running. If I was an Uber driver, though, I would hate when people. Some people were like, don't care. I mean, I've never stopped, but like I have friends that do. That would be like. Yeah, but Uber drivers, I've talked to a lot of them, and they hate that. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, like, I, I wouldn't know. I only took Uber like three times, and that one time was when the guy went around my entire block. And oh, I, I like, remember you telling me, bro. Yeah. And so, but anyway, so I mean, I think it's kind of cool. It's gonna be they're gonna be debuting in um, Pittsburgh. Yep, Pittsburgh, PA. So if you guys are out in Pittsburgh and you try this, we would love to hear about this experience. Is it as scary as I think it's gonna be, or it's is it not as gonna? It's gonna be cool as Mariana wants it to be. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. I don't know. It's going to be totally unscary and just cool. As long as you can do like on the Uber app, you know how you can like select Uber X or Plus or whatever. As long uh, as you can select well, whether or not you want oh, a driverless one. No, you can't. It. Oh the, my gosh. No, I don't like that. They're if choosing, it comes here, then I can't cancel. Then I get well, charged. No, no, no. Just for right now, they can't. Oh. Because it's still, it's still not officially official. It, well, it's a it's test. It's like in a beta stage. Well, the thing is, since it's a test, they have, it's, they're randomly selecting people. So there's only 100 um, Volvos right now. And they will be like, they'll be chosen at random. You won't know what's a driverless car. <laughs> That's rude. Until they get there. So they're just forcing me to be a part of an experiment that I don't want to be a part of. Yeah. Mm-mm. Then I'm going to push cancel. I don't think you should get charged if you cancel it when you realize it's a driverless car. I would do it. But I, would I wouldn't. Totally so that's what it. I'm saying. Like, I hope I don't get. Well, yeah, but, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure, in Pittsburgh. So. But, but, I'm, but I'm sure you could write Uber and be like, hey, I didn't want to do this. Like, give me one. True. Money yeah. I'm sure you can deny it. I'm sure. I would hope. Because that's kind of like not fair. But then I guess their argument could be you can't really choose who your Uber driver is when there's a person in it. Yeah, but but I think that they would understand the difference between person and no person. Yeah, I would hope so. So, I mean, that's going to wrap up our episode yes. today of the Social Media News Podcast. I'm Pauline. Did you just get English all of a sudden? <laughs> Did I? <laughs> Did it sound like a little Social weird? Social Media News Podcast. I'm I don't Pauline. Know. My mouth is getting a little bit dry, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> but you can listen to us uh, this episode on Twitter. Any of our Previous episodes, our future episodes on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and yep. of course on our network website, gsmcpodcast.com. You can also tweet at us if you're in Pittsburgh and you happen to get picked up by one of these cars. Oh, yeah. Let us know. I really Let would, me know because Pauline sucks. I, I just want to know <laughs> about the experience and if it was cool, not cool. How far did you go? Does yeah. it depend on how far you go? Don't let us know if you end up dead, though. Are you allowed it, to go on the freeway in one of these cars? Well, yeah, everyone has to go on the freeway. It's Pittsburgh. It's Ooh, a big city. Oh, no, 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 no. I would I, cancel. I'm going to cancel it. Uberless driver. I mean, a driverless Uber. <laughs> Such a <laughs> sorry Uber hater. But um, yeah, and then you can so you can hit us up on Twitter at gsmc underscore underscore excuse me s media so s media s media. And we love to. I, I really do want to hear about your guys's experience. But we're out, Mariano. Out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>